Touchdown BC is sponsored by the Robertson Braun Group, Remax Kelowna. Thinking real estate in Kelowna? Think Blake Robertson, Marlene Braun. For more information, call 250-212-2888 or 250-878-5242. Touchdown BC is also sponsored by Subway and the Subway Bowl. The Subway Bowl hosts and supports the BC High School Football Championships and amateur football around the province. I'm LeGarrett Blunt. I play for the New England Patriots, the running back. You're watching Touchdown BC. Welcome to Touchdown BC. I'm your host, Adam Kordick, and joining me is my co-host, Ty Clark. Ty, can you believe it's our very last episode? We got a lot of football to catch everyone up on. Adam, it's a bittersweet symphony of emotion, as obviously we're excited that it's a playoff time, but also this is our last episode. Yeah, it is closing time, as uh, they say, the, the song by Semisonic. We don't have the rights to actually play that song, else we would be. But going into this weekend, we have the Subway Bowl Provincial Championships across each level. But before we get into who's playing in the Subway Bowl, let's catch everyone up on the highlights from high school. Time now for the Subway Bowl BC High School Football Report. It is finally here, the Subway Bowl Provincial Championship going down at BC Place this Saturday. But before we get into those games, let's find out who won this weekend in the semifinals and we'll be moving on to the ship. Triple A semifinals, South Delta Sun Devils taking on the Terry Fox Ravens. First Q Sun Devils QB, Michael Calvert looks to pass but feels the pressure, has to roll out to his right. Does a great job to get rid of it right in the hands of Stefanos Goulas for a first down. A couple plays later, it's Calvert again. This time calling his own number from five yards out, he gets in to score to give the South Delta Sun Devils the early lead. The Ravens next possession facing a fourth and one on their own 44. Jeremy Cancalongo gets the snap, tries to pick up the one yard needed, but is stopped short by a gang of Sun Devils. Then the Sun Devils facing a fourth down of their own and it's number two Calvert. Looks like he's gonna be stopped in the backfield, but we have seen this movie before, Calvert gets away, turns on the Jets down the sideline. No one is catching him. He goes 40 yards to the house, and the Sun Devils now lead by 14. Early second, Ravens looking to answer. QB Jaden Shanley looks to air it out, and boy, did he ever. Right in the arms of Andy Hanlon, who catches it in stride and will do the rest on this 70-yard bomb for the major. South Delta takes a 14-7 lead into halftime. Opening kickoff of the second half, Xander Bailey receives the kick at the 10 and Bailey looks for room to run. Sees some room on the outside and takes off. What a start to the second half for the Ravens. Bailey returns this all the way to the Sun Devils 25 yard line. After the Ravens get a first down, Ankalongo will go to work, taking the rock on a direct snap, getting away from two SD defenders, bouncing it outside, getting to the edge and the touchdown to boot. We are all tied up at 14th. Just before the end of the third, Calvert gets the snap. Ravens get good pressure, Calvert breaks a couple tackles and gets rid of it, but it's right in the hands of Ravens. Mitch By making a great play on the ball for a pick and he returns it into the Sun Devils red zone. South Delta would hold the Ravens to a field goal attempt. Devin Pasagula from 33 yards out for the lead, just misses wide and we are still all tied up in the fourth cue. South Delta gets the ball back and on third and one, we see some Calvert magic again. He runs to the left side, finding a seam, and it is a foot race after that. Calvert just keeps going, taking the ball all the way down inside the Ravens' 10-yard line. Very next play, Calvert rolling out, hits his go-to receiver, Billy Matt with China, who does a great job getting his feet down for the TD and the lead. 21-14 Sun Devils. With five minutes remaining, the Ravens look to put a drive together. First, Cancalongo breaking off for a huge 15-yard first down run. Then Shanley calls his own number for a gain of 13 and another first down. Ravens looking to tie it up, moving the ball. Second and 10, Xander Bailey gets the handoff on a jet sweep and looks to run to the right side, but can't seem to find any room, so he decides to cut it back, breaks away before getting taken down after a penalty. 
Ravens at the one yard line. And it's Cancalongo going off tackle and powering his way into the end zone. We have a one point ball game. It looks like we're looking OT, but Terry Fox elects to go for two and maybe the win. Looks like the same play, but the hole is just not there for Cancalongo. Jukes out one defender and races to the pylon for two. The Ravens lead 22 to 21. 28 seconds left, Sun Devils facing second and 27. Try a reverse pass, Cancalongo is all over it. And Doug Jamison tries to force a pass, throws it anywhere, and it's picked off by Ravens' Matt Schuen. The Terry Fox Ravens are moving on to the Subway Bowl, defeating the South Delta Sun Devils 22 to 21. And who will they be playing? Let's find out. Notre Dame jugglers New West Hayaks, winner moving on to the finals. New West first possession and they are forced to punt. Jugglers number 11, Brendan Woodman rushes in and blocks the punt, giving ND great field position. Couple plays into their drive, it's Joseph Santa Lucia get in the handoff and he will take the rock 13 yards to the Hayak six yard line. Two plays later, it's QB Steven Moretto calling his own number to the left side and he will score to give the Jugglers a 7-0 early lead. This was a very defensive game. Late second, Hayaks look to get some points before half. Hayaks facing a third and 21. Josh Olango gets the ball and takes off. Great run, Olango takes the ball to the 11 yard line. Couple of plays later, New West facing a fourth and three. The handoff is the true Dancy, but the jugglers are all over it, making the stop and forcing the turnover on downs. Notre Dame would head in the locker room with a seven point lead. First drive of the second half, the jugglers put a seven minute drive together, ending with Moretto taking it in himself with authority for a second touchdown of the game. And now ND leads by 14, but these high acts never quit. Next possession is Lucas Sabo on the carry up the gut. Sabo is big, but he can fly, leaving everyone behind him. A couple ND players eventually catch up, but it is too late. Sabo scores from 60 yards out, and the New West Hayaks only trail by one score now. Late third, it's Steven Moretto once again making a game-changing play. Takes the snap, looks to run, gets some good blocks, and breaks away. Steven Moretto to the house for the TD hat trick from 50 yards out. Notre Dame now leads. 20 to 8. Hayax look to respond, but Conseil Phillip is picked off looking for Prento Durigon by Santa Lucia, and he will return it to midfield. This one looks to be over with 17 seconds left. The Hayax with the ball. Conseil Phillip looking for Prento Durigon again. This time it's caught for a touchdown. Great catch there. New West would not recover onside kick. Notre Dame is moving on to the ship, defeating New West 20 to 14. That sets up the Subway Bowl AAA final. The Notre Dame Jugglers versus the Terry Fox Ravens under the dome at BC Place. Kickoff at seven on Saturday. What a matchup in this one. Two of the best players in high school football will battle it out. Here we go, double A semifinals between Vernon and Hugh Boyd. And on the very first play of the game, it's Vernon setting the tone early with a great run by Riley Boss, who really lives up to his last name. Later in the drive, Vernon from the eight yard line and Thomas Hyatt finds Bradley Halatic for the opening drive TD to go ahead seven to zero. The Halatic brothers would really carry the load for Vernon in this one. Later in the first, Vernon would look to do some more damage as Hyatt drops back, but look out, big Nikos Lazarakus with an even bigger sack for Hugh Boyd. Tail end of the first, Hyatt shows off the arm with a laser pass, but it's an even better catch by Ben Halatic who uses that 6-4 frame to go up there and get what he wants. Great play by Big Ben to put Vernon at first and goal. And that would set this up as the turn of the second quarter. It's Hyatt finding his favorite target once again. Ben Halatic finishing what he started off. And just like that, Vernon goes ahead 14 to zero on Hugh Boyd. Later in the quarter, third and goal from the one yard line. It's Tyler Moxon wiggling and squirming just past the line for the TD to put Hugh Boyd on the board. Hugh Boyd now trails 14 to seven. Tail end of the second, Hugh Boyd with the ball on fourth and four, looking Enzo to try to tie it up at half. Moxon scrambles out, and it goes right through the hands of Shakur Lopez and off the hands of Robbie Conroy. Fast forward to the third cue now. Hugh Boyd punting. No, it's a fake. Austin Berry takes the direct snap, hoping to catch Vernon off guard, but it doesn't work. Vernon takes over with great field position, but Vernon wouldn't be able to secure a TD, so they'll try to kick a field goal on fourth and five, but it's blocked. 
Dylan Roach gets his hand on it for Hugh Boyd to keep this a one possession game. Six and a half minutes later, Vernon lines up for another field goal. No, this is not deja vu. Hugh Boyd blocks another field goal. This Hugh Boyd special teams unit is keeping them alive as they take over from their own two yard line. A couple plays later, Tyler Moxon looks to make something happen for his squad. Unfortunately, his pass deflected off the mitts of Charles LeMay and right in the hands of Bradley Hiladic, who scores his second of the day, one on each side of the ball. And that would be it as Vernon defeats Hugh Boyd 21 to seven in the first double A semifinal game to move on to the championships. But who will they play? Siakam Seahawks taking on the GW Graham Grizzlies for a berth in the Subway Bowl. First cue, the Seahawks pull off a little trickery. Jalen Philpot tosses it to his bro Tyson on the reverse, who then takes off following his blocks, breaking tackles one after another after another until making it all the way down to the 22-yard line. A couple plays later, it's QB Josh Haydu running it in from three yards out for the score and gives the Seahawks the early lead. The Grizz drive the field on their next possession, but QB Gabe Oliveres, while rolling out because of the pressure, loses a handle on the ball and the Seahawks recover. And Siakwa would make the Grizz pay. Third and 20, Haydu decides to air this one out and does he ever. Hitting an open Terrell Kinch. And what a throw and catch Kinch will score to give the Seahawks a two score lead. Later in the second, more from the Siakam D. Oliveras looking to pass, but it's picked off by Jalen Philpot, who makes a great play on the ball. Siakam just rolling. They would drive the field, and Haydu hits Jalen on a quick pass, and Jalen does the rest, running in for the major. Siakam up 20 to 0 at the half. In the third, the Seahawks would add another one, and the dagger, fourth and two, give it to a Philpot to get it done. That's Jalen, and that would be all she wrote. GW would score one but it would not be enough. Siakwam is moving on after defeating GW Graham 26 to seven. So that sets up the Subway AA Varsity Championship. The Siakwam Seahawks versus the Vernon Panthers. Saturday, BC Place kickoff at 4.30. Tier two finals with Pet Meadows ahead 13 to zero over Eric Hamber in the second quarter. Six minutes in, Cedric Henderson scrambles around, but the pockets around him are collapsing. So he runs out of the pocket and throws up a prayer, and that prayer is answered by Arthur Lee, who goes up and grabs it. Hamber trails 13 to six, but Pitt Meadows would take it back the other way. Hayden Barton running it up the gut, his second TD of the day already, to put the Marauders up 20 to six. On the ensuing kickoff, something strange happened. The squib pit bounces straight up and hobbles around the 25 yard line, but no one is able to get a grip on it. This is until Jeffrey Ojong comes around and it doesn't look good with the gaps closing in on him, but somehow he is able to wiggle free and even looks like he could go the distance, but he is taken down at the Marauders 33 yard line. Six seconds left in the half, Hamburg needing some magic as they trail by 14. Henderson rolls out of the pocket and throws up another prayer which somehow finds the hands of Callum Oxley through traffic, but he drops it. Pitt Meadows looking to start off the second half, much like they did the first, but Arthur Lee says, not on my watch. Great coverage by Lee, who secures a big pick for Hamber, now adding an interception to his first half TD. Unfortunately for Eric Hamber, that turnover did not reap any benefits as they would be forced to punt, but the punt is blocked. Hayden Barton getting his hand on the muff punt, also adding to his already impressive championship game, putting Pitt Meadows in great field position and Pitt Meadows would make them pay. Brandon Hunt, the other half of the two head rushing attack for Pitt Meadows as Hunt also secures his second rushing touchdown of the day and the Marauders further their lead 27 to six. With the Griffins starting to lose a foothold on this one, Henderson tries to make something happen. Unfortunately for him, he throws it into a sea of green jerseys. This time it's the other 22, Braden Anderson who picks him off to the fourth we go and look at this beautiful connection. Tato Ferrero throws a beautiful ball, perfectly placed in the outreach arms of Tayden Mountford, who scorches his man in for the TD. Pitt Meadows starting to run away with this one. With the clock against them, Eric Hammer starts to mount something just over a minute later. This time it's Cedric Anderson with a beautiful toss right into the midst of Bastion Kondratakowski. And that would be the way this one panned out as Pitt Meadows takes a knee to end the game winning the championship, beating Eric Hamber and a friend of the show, Rajit Kelia, putting an end to a great season for both teams.
There are some other championship games going on at BC Place on Saturday. Mount Douglas will play Lord Tweedsmere at two for the AAA JV Championship. In the AA JV Championship at 11.30, we will see a battle of crosstown rivals, Nanaimo taking on John Barsby. And last but not least, starting at 9 a.m., set your alarms, we will have the Grade 8 Championship game between Vancouver College and Notre Dame. Time now for the BC High School football port for the last time of this season with Dino, Jeremia. Dino, it's been a pleasure. One last time, uh, it's going to be great to talk about the future of uh, the provincial championships coming up here. Your team, the Notre Dame Jugglers, defeating New West to move on to the provincial finals. Yeah, it was, uh, as I've said, there's a great group of kids that are playing for uh, Notre Dame, and it's a pleasure to be a part of it. It's an exciting week. Um, to head into the Subway Bowl and, you know, the anticipation of a great game on Saturday night. Yeah, it's been since 93. Let's talk about that game. Steven Moretto, three rushing touchdowns. Um, Notre Dame was up most of the game. Obviously, New West got uh, a touchdown late. And then Moretto, same thing as he did uh, a week ago, the long touchdown run in the third quarter that somewhat ices the game. Yeah, I, I think that uh, New West did a great job uh, defensively uh, holding Moretto to limited yardage, um, especially early on. But, um, you know, those great athletes, and we'll talk about them as well from other teams, but uh, those great athletes, one little mistake, and all of a sudden they make you pay. And it was just a matter of time and uh, had that opening and uh, cashed it in with a touchdown. So it was exciting. And another great athlete that you were talking about uh, in what was a game that came down right to the end, Terry Fox defeated South Delta 22-21. to uh, They score with uh, a minute 40 left and then go for two to, to win. Uh, what can you say about that game? Well, I, just South Delta, what a, what a battle. And I uh, really thought that they came in with a great game plan, uh, showed all their weapons, uh, great performance all the way through. Uh, but in the end, uh, Terry Fox rode Kankalongo, uh, their top player that's been there all year long. And uh, he came up with the big plays, the yards uh, when they needed him. Um, you know, tough running, physical game. Uh, we saw him, as I mentioned last week, banging with... Uh, McDonald from South Delta several times and in the end uh, going for two gutsy call uh, at the end of the game there and it paid off for them. Yeah and uh, looking at the Terry Fox win there it was the first time they actually uh, were down in, at some level um, you know we've seen them all season long start to finish the best team putting up points. Uh, it kind of changed things up there. They were down 14 minutes, uh, sorry, 14 points early in that game, and then they were also um, down seven with, you know, seven to play there. What does that show about a great team able to win games at, in any way? Uh, that's, a, that's a huge uh, feather in their cap, obviously, uh, like you said. Uh, going through the season, uh, having, have, being able to roll on people and getting up big, kind of the second half, just kind of cruising through. Um, this tested their character, and obviously, uh, you know, every team gets there um, because they've been able to show and they've been able to sustain and they've been able to overcome some adversity uh, throughout games and throughout the season, injuries, etc. So, uh, again, they're full value for being there in the championship. And now that sets up the championship matchup. Terry Fox Ravens against the Notre Dame Jugglers, two, uh, led by two of the most elite athletes in football. Steven Moretto versus Ken Colongo. Obviously, both teams have a lot of other pieces that help your teams win games. Uh, what can you expect in that one on, from a Notre Dame side? Uh, I think it's, it's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough for um, uh, Notre Dame's defense to hold Ken Colongo, Ken Colongo down and limit his yards. Um, he's a tough tackle, uh, he's physical, um, and he can beat you with a shake and with his speed. So obviously a very difficult uh, task for, for the defense. Um, and then for Terry Fox, uh, they're gonna have the same issues with, uh, with Moretto. And uh, I think over the last couple of weeks, uh, Notre Dame has shown some uh, real positives with other people making plays as well, with Santa Lucia carrying the ball and showing some speed on the outside. So um, gonna be a chess match and uh, it's gonna be physical 
and uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, you'll be <laughs> right there on the sidelines. I'll yeah. be watching. Uh, let's get to the double A game, the game that's going to be going on uh, before uh, Terry Fox versus Notre Dame. But first, let's set up the teams that are now in that championship game. Siakam beats GW Graham uh, 26 to 7. Uh, they led 20 nothing at the half, and obviously we see that Haydu and Philpott combo, yeah. uh, quarterback, running back, kind of receiver, doing a lot for those that team, especially down the stretch. They put up 77 against Dutchess Park a week before, and now they beat a very good GW Graham team. Yeah, I, I mean, the athletes, the speed that uh, Siakam has shown uh, in the playoffs and throughout the year, uh, really came through on the turf at BC Place. Uh, GW Graham just couldn't get... Um, themselves rolling and had uh, fits all night trying to stop uh, Phil Pot and um, just limiting their offense to, to you know minimal yardage. It just seemed like every time Siakam wanted to get a play, they were able to do that. Uh, unfortunate that uh, GW Graham, I think they're a great solid team. Uh, they weren't able to establish the run game, uh, which is key to their success. Uh, they've got that big offensive line, big linemen on both sides of the ball. Uh, they just had difficulty establishing that run, uh, which made it difficult when they had to go to pass later in the game. And into that other game, who they're going to be playing? They're going to be playing Vernon, who beat Hugh Boy 21 to 7. Vernon, I don't like to say that they're the Cinderella story, but uh, it's been two decades since a team not from the Fraser Valley, not from the Lower Mainland, and not from Vancouver Island has been to a double A provincial championship game. Uh, what can you say about uh, Vernon beating a very good Hugh Boyd team? Yeah, I mean, full full value to that victory. Uh, Coach Sean Smith up in Vernon, uh, he's been coaching for a long time, uh, has done a great job with that Vernon team. Uh, they've really come together. Again, they had some adversity early, uh, but um, they're, you know, I'm excited to see them. And, and it, like you said, it's nice to see uh, somebody from the interior come in and being able to play in the provincial championship. It says a lot for football up there. It says a lot for football in the province. And now it looks like we're going to have a good matchup. Siakam playing Vernon, uh, AA provincial finals. Uh, I don't want to put you on the spot, but uh, do you have? Are, are you leaning any any way or another there? For it's Vernon Siakam, uh, you know what? I I don't I don't think I'm leaning any way. I, I like to see a great game. Yep. And I want to see uh, Vernon show well uh, because, like, for those reasons that I just mentioned. So um, I, I want to see them come down, have a great performance, and be able to show that the interior is on the uprise. Well, thanks, Dino. This is the last time we're going to do this, but uh, thanks for joining us all season long. It was a pleasure working with you, and uh, we'll definitely uh, try to get with Dino next week uh, on Facebook something, do something a little extra for the show, but I appreciate Dino and best of luck for the Notre Dame Jugglers this weekend. Thank you, Adam. The CFL and our partners at Football Canada want to make sure we keep growing, promoting, and investing in a safe game. Hit! Football Canada now requires all amateur coaches to be safe contact trained by 2017. By creating a standard of safety for all in our football community, we're making an already great game even better. Make sure your youth coach is safe contact trained because making a safe game means making a better game. I'm Christian Compton of the Houston Texans, and you're watching Touchdown BC. Playoffs? We're talking about playoffs in the BC CFA. Huge games are played this past weekend with the winners moving on to the BC CFA 12-man provincial championship this Sunday at McLeod Stadium. Time to get into the action. Coming up this Sunday, December 4th, we have the Stampeders taking on the Kodiaks in the Midget 12-Man Championships. That game starting at 5 p.m. at McLeod Stadium. Taking a look at the Bantam semifinals, it was both home teams pulling away with the victories as the Bears beat the Knights 25-13 and the Tigers will also be moving on as they beat the Rams 41-6. And in the Bantam 12-man championships, we have the Bears taking on the Tigers. That game also going on at McLeod Stadium Sunday, December 4th at 2.30 p.m. And we've got the Junior Bantam 12-man championships coming up Sunday, December 4th at McLeod Stadium featuring the Renegades and the Chilliwack Giants Blue kickoff at noon. 
And in the Pee Wee Commissioner's Cup, we had a nail biter with the Wolverines defeating the Rams by a score of 10 to nothing. And it's the Pee Wee Championships coming up this week. White versus the Titans, Sunday, December 4th, the McLeod Stadium. Kickoff in that game starting at 10 a.m. Hi, I'm G. Roy Stein with the BC Lions. You're watching Touchdown BC. Well, that does it for this episode, and in fact, this season of Touchdown BC. Adam, it's been another great ride. Yeah, it's been a great season all year long. Great football was played, and obviously, even following the BCFC this season, unfortunately, UBC didn't win a Vanier, so we're 1-1 one one now, UBC Vanier is when we host the show. Uh, we're not going to have a show next week, because there's a lot of games that we going to catch you up on still. So tune into our Facebook page at facebook.com backslash touchdown BC. We're going to have some bonus coverage of the games from this weekend. Don't forget uh, those community games across the board, the championships and all 12 men finals. And uh, of course, BC high school football. Well, that was uh, a pleasure, Mr. Ty Clark, and we'll see everyone next year. Touchdown BC is sponsored by the Robertson Braun Group, Remax Kelowna. Thinking real estate in Kelowna? Think Blake Robertson, Marlene Braun. For more information, call 250-212-2888 or 250-878-5242. Touchdown BC is also sponsored by Subway and the Subway Bowl. The Subway Bowl hosts and supports the BC High School Football Championships and amateur football around the province. The CFL and our partners at Football Canada want to make sure we keep growing, promoting, and investing in a safe game. Hit! Football Canada now requires all amateur coaches to be safe contact trained by 2017. By creating a standard of safety for all in our football community, we're making an already great game even better. Make sure your youth coach is safe contact trained, because making a safe game means making a better game. Thanks for watching Touchdown BC throughout this season. Hope everyone enjoyed. We just wanted to give a big thank you to all our sponsors this season and to remind everyone to follow us on social media, especially Facebook, where we're going to have bonus coverage of the BC High School Championships this upcoming Saturday at BC Play Stadium. So tune in next week to our Facebook, and we're going to have special highlight packs done right for those games. Thanks again, everyone.